Hey everyone, uh, today I wanted to go over some game design principles. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to name this series, but I am going to make a few videos on this, on how to efficiently organize your game, and specifically larger games, like that may have to deal with like multiple scenes, adventure games, platformers with multiple levels, so on and so forth. Um, so one thing that a few of you have asked is how to make things like persistent and how to, um, what my motherboard, um, think my motherboard concept is. Well, in this scene here, we have a few things that are persistent depending on your progress in the game. Um, I'm going to turn off preview and visibility, and as you can see, there is this guy here, and he's over here as well. We've got his escape pod thing, his time machine, I mean. Um, and basically just all that kind of stuff. So, what I do here is we have a variable and variables you can um, well this is a variable modifier but variables basically store a number value and it stores it persistently if you have that checked um, I'm gonna talk about this in a minute here just this this microchip in particular but if I open this up uh, let's see here. Where is my quest? I mean, demo quests. Okay. So, these are variables. As you can see, they can have a minimum and maximum value. And they have a couple of options here. There's multiplayer, persistent dream, force reset, um, I'm not entirely sure um, how to use this efficiently as there's no input for it. I don't know if you'd like turn this on when you publish the scene or something but yeah so then you have the current value and then increased or decreased and the main big thing here is persist in dream. When on this variable can be assessed from all scenes in a dream and is saved in the save data for that dream. You must replicate this variable, i.e. the same name and settings in all scenes. And that kind of makes it a bit tricky um, because you can't just define a variable and then have it be saved. Like um, if you want to make like pickups like coins or my, in my case an egg that increases your experience or gives you skill points to spend in a uh, skill system. Um, you can't just put it in the world and expect the player to pick it up, leave the scene, and then come back, and then it'll be back again. One thing that you'd th think would be ma to make that easier is if you could just place a variable, make it persist in dream, and that's that. When you pick it up, this changes, and then when this is that variable that you set it to, when it changes, uh, it's turned off forever. You can't get it anymore. Um, but unfortunately, variables have this requirement of having to be in every single scene in your dream in order for them to persist. Uh, if you go into a scene without ver that variable in it, uh, I believe, I'm pretty sure, I'm 90% sure, you lose the variable data um, that was stored, which is very unfortunate because you could easily make pickups like with their own unique names um, just for variables and such. But since they have to be in every single scene, you have to organize yourself. So that's where the motherboard comes in. The motherboard is a microchip that stores mainly variables but it can also store other logic as well. So this entire microchip is just filled with different kinds of variables, 
the different settings and different contexts and there's microchips within microchips so on and so forth as you can see I have a lot planned for this game uh, some of this isn't implemented yet but there's a lot um, there's even more in here these kind of do something right now not really then this is yet to be filled out so as you can see um, this microchip is very important it stores all the data in your dream so therefore you need to have it in every scene well how do you do that well um, first of all you want to make sure that this is a separate element like its, its own object so if we go into search I have another I have a collection of game assets for this game that I've been working on and this is something that you're probably going to want to do as well. I might talk in depth about collections for game management later. But in here we have shroomquest.logic.motherboard. And it's just that. It's its own element that you can get. And it's basically a contraption, I think. That's what it's labeled as. I'm not 100% sure. Let me check. It should be a contraption. Yep. And the next big important part of this is if you change this, like the actual object, you're gonna want the um, you're gonna want this to update in all of your scenes, not just one of them. So one thing that you might have not known about dreams or known not have known is a feature is you can edit elements once they're in your scene. You just have to select them and then on the right side you can edit source and it will bring up the actual object that was in your scene. And in here if you need to make any changes like add another pickup like another egg to be picked up that's persistent. You just do this and then once you're done editing you could you save it and then you return to previous creation. Don't save for now because I didn't make any changes and you would have to update this by default you it doesn't change automatically so you need to go into your modes menu in your assembly and you go to update mode now in here this is a list of every single object within your scene or element that any element from the dreamiverse not things that you make in the scene but any element in the Dreamiverse, you're able to find it from this. So, for example, this guy, it can select this guy. And there's quite a lot of them. Or at least basic versions of it. So we got eight. So the important thing to take out of this is that you can update objects from this menu. It'll tell you um, to update each one individually. I don't have anything to update right now, so... I can't update anything to show you, but if you have multiple objects to update, it will have a little button down here in the right corner, lower right corner, that says update all or accept all updates. But one thing that you're going to want to do, specifically for motherboards and probably your like player, is you're going to want to do auto update. Now auto update um, basically makes it so when you change something like for example if I go in and edit the source of this change it and save it and then come back it'll automatically update and then all you have to do in order to get these to update in your other scenes is just to open the scene and then save it so for example if you change this for one scene you're gonna have to go, go through all the scenes in your game and update it unfortunately I'm not I'm pretty sure you have to open them and save them as a new version. I don't think it automatically applies the update if you don't open the scene, unfortunately. I th that would be great if that was a thing, but I don't think it is. Um, and I don't really have a way to test it right now. So, yeah. That's basically what motherboards are and how this concept works. 
these are these are very important for things like RPGs, and it also helps you keep track of important logic in your scene. For example, if you have um, cutscenes that you want to trigger specifically um, every single time, maybe like opening a menu or something like that, you could make that part of a motherboard, or you could probably make another object that auto-updates and you place in every single scene. Um, I have my menu for the player as part of, they're part of the actual player. This menu here that you see in the game is actually part of the player. So that gets updated with the player every single time you update it. Um, now for the use of, like, actually using variables to achieve, like, difference and persistence in your dream is you need to use variable modifiers as well as calculators and basically use the calculator to get the current va value of your variable and if it's a certain value then you turn things on your scene or turn them off like if you have a pickup and basically it's really easy demonstration of this would be um, like the actual pickup that I have here is in here I got the egg the egg boy and with this you have variable modifier egg demo underwater fall and basically I don't have a calculator here because I just set it to one and then logic here so I set Eggs available to 10. And then in this timeline here, egg demo under waterfall, I set to 1. So basically, since the not gate, if it receives a signal greater than 0, it'll turn off. Um, basically, this is being set to 1 when you pick this up, so it turns off the entire egg. And then when you leave the scene and come back, this variable is persistent. So it'll be, still be 1, and therefore you can't pick it up again because it's turned off. And that pretty much works for anything that you're doing. So if you want to move a character around in your level depending on like how far a quest is, um, you would set a quest like stage, for example. If you, any of you have messed with, uh, I guess... Fallout or Skyrim modding or Elder Scrolls modding, basically creation kit stuff. A stage is a number that represents how far along you've progressed in a quest. So if you, for example, start a quest, uh, before it started it's probably going to be zero and then when you start it it's at one. When you pick up the item you need for the quest it'll be two and then when you finish the quest it's three. So depending on those stages, um, you can set different variables for like characters in your scene. Zero would be, have like, for example, a guy at his house. One, he says that you can meet him at his uh, like farm or something like that, or like a shed or a specific place, and you can animate him walking there. And then you leave the scene as the player, and then when you come back, it'll automatically put. Um, that dude in the location or they'll start walking in the location depending on how you have the logic set up because you set the variable to one for starting the quest and you do this for like dialogue as well um, basically anything that you want advanced in your scene is going to have to deal with variables if you want a persistent scene that actually keeps track of what the player is doing um, so variables are very important. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm getting the point across, but hey, um, it's something. <laughs> I hope you all learned something here. I know it's a bit of a shorter vi video, but I wanted to get something out and explain something that I think is very important. So really, um, only other one thing that I want to talk about, I guess, would be the collection here. Um, if you want to keep organized in your game, when it, you want to make assets, basically. You don't want to make everything in a, in a scene. You want to work specifically as if you are a artist, a programmer, a just 
game designer, etc. So a scene would be separate from your art. So right here I have a bunch of models for the character. And these are made by my artist friend and the other project lead. And basically they have them saved as separate objects. And this helps because if, for example, an artist makes a change to an asset, asset or you make a change to an asset, you can change that in your player model or your player puppet, whatever that you're using that asset in. And you can do the same for scenes and so on and so forth. Um, if you don't use a collection like this, you're going to end up with your assets all over the place. Like I have some right here. Then I have the player right here, and then the motherboard for this is right here. Surprised I don't have more assets back here. I do have this. There's an egg back here. So yeah, it, you end up getting disorganized if you don't use a collection. So I'd recommend to anybody that's working on a larger project to use a collection to organize your project. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you all learned something in just game development in general. Um, it's pretty much four dreams, but hey, uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bang.